The rivalry with you and Paul Slowinski is something you're both probably sick of talking about, but it's the, the two elite big men in the industry. I think it's refreshing the fact that you've confronted each other, not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. We don't see it a lot in combat sport. We don't see it a lot in boxing. You two are the big guys and you're going at it. You're saying yes to fights. Yeah, mate. mate I'll, as a person, I don't mind Paul. He's not a bad mm. guy, man. But we do have a very healthy rivalry in the ring. Yep. And we've got a real contrast of styles as well. He, he's the big kicker, I'm the big puncher. Yep. So we've had four fights and it's been four pretty exciting fights. So uh, we're two weeks. So let's go again. Now, let's, the let's... last one, uh, Hammer, oh, been yep. awesome with the punches round yep. one, but the sting was kicking back. He was, and uh, you know, he, he slowly made up made up ground and it was a tough fight and of course now it sets up for the fifth and potentially final fight or who knows you know what the result is but of course sting uh, has been invited into the combat aid as well and you know talking to him he knows that the kicking is his you know that's where he's at that's yeah. his strength so he's not silly to want to trade with you with those small gloves um, so I don't think that's going to eventuate. He wants to keep it in the, in the kickboxing or the, or the Muay Thai realm. Yeah, mate, Paul's, uh, his, his, his low kicks, he's up there. It's him and Daniel Gitto. They're the two best leg kickers in the world, mate. He's, um, he moves, he's so agile for a big man. And uh, mm. obviously, he's the, he's the worst time matchup for me, and he's made me pay for it twice. Do you get used to, do you get conditioned to receiving the Slowinski kicks. I mean, they are so big and they are so fast and powerful. There's only so much you can do in training. Yeah. You know, no. Let me, let me, let yeah. me ask you this, all right, because obviously the, the, we've both been around a long time. Now, conditioning for the lead thigh, for, for the guys at home, is basically the only way you're going to condition your, your thighs is by getting them kicked and That's kicked it. repeatedly. So is it a factor that at your gym or in Canberra, there's no guys big enough to kick you hard enough to worry you? Is, I, that, is that a factor? I would, yeah, 100%. I have to go, go up to Sydney to train with the McKinnon brothers to, to get any sparring in, in mm. Australia. You know, I think Paul's the only other guy who could possibly spar, mm. you know, except with the exception of Peter Graham, of course. But you, when I went to Holland, all the, all the kids that have been doing it since, you know, they were 10 years old, you can kick them in the leg all day and it doesn't even bother them. Yeah. So That's getting that conditioning every day conditioning. is uh, very beneficial. Your conditioning, your training, your knockout power. The knockout power... Is it natural or is it something that you've worked on throughout? No, I've had it since day one. I remember yeah. hitting a uh, punching bag in my mate's shed. It was tied to the battens holding the roof off and I'm bashing this thing in there. The batten fell off, broke the roof. His dad was thrilled, but at least <laughs> I knew I had a big shot. <laughs> Why weren't you called Ben the Batten Breaker? Mate, it's better than, all the, better than all the nicknames I got, so I'll take yeah. it. Hammer's got some nicknames that we simply yeah. cannot repeat yeah. here. Most of them given to by my exes. And yeah, yeah they, God bless them. <laughs>